Doctrines of Devils 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. The Bible contains everything God wants His church to know. There is nothing concealed from the knowledge of Christians, all we need to know to stay steady in this end time is written out in the Bible. Many of us are only familiar with Bible doctrines and Apostles' doctrines, however the Bible now teaches us that there are devil doctrines as well. The fact is that there are certain doctrines that Christians dispute about that are unimportant, and it is painful to see the body of Christ split over little matters. However, there are several doctrines that are essential to our salvation. The fact is that doctrines may determine whether someone goes to paradise or hell. In these last days, one of Satan's techniques for infiltrating the church is through satanic doctrines. By the inspiration and revelation of the Holy Spirit, Apostle Paul warned that in the end days, many Christians would turn away from the faith they have received because seductive spirits will trick or deceive them. In other words, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 warns us that there are demonic spirits in the church who misinterpret the Word of God, resulting in changing the Word of God rather than being a Holy Spirit-filled preacher. They are seducing spirits who encourage preachers. They are preachers possessed by demons. As a result, Many will leave the basic grounds and doctrines of Christianity to follow and abide by the false doctrine of the devil himself. Although these spirits aim at drifting believers from the faith, they will present their doctrines in such a way that will seem helpful to the body of Christ. Already as we speak, there are many doctrines of devils that are in the body of Christ, and right now a good number of believers are being deceived. This is the opportunity for the body of Christ to dive into God's Word and immerse itself in the truth. We must read and study our Bibles in order to detect any forgeries. Some doctrines will appear to be for our benefit while, in reality, they are designed to ensnare Christians and lead them astray. We are currently at a period in which devil doctrines are being taught on our altars, and multitudes of Christians accept them as God's message to the church. The devil has sent false teachers into numerous churches to preach heresies and mislead God's people. We must all be careful of these demonic doctrines because they do not sometimes appear to be misleading until the Holy Spirit illuminates our hearts and opens our understanding. Satan knows how to manipulate us, and that is why the doctrines of demons are so effective. Satan is not new to this, he has been manipulating humans from the first man and woman, and he has been perfecting his craft from then till now. You are new to this warfare, but the devil and demons are not. Doctrines of devils usually have truth in them and then they are mixed with some lies. The devil is not an idiot. He isn't going to jump out with horns under pitchfork, wiggling his tail and then go stand on the pulpit and preach to you. No, he will come as the Bible told us. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. We must also keep in mind that the demons in charge of spreading these devilish doctrines are seducers. They are skilled at persuading people to believe falsehoods. Another attitude we should adopt is to advocate for the true doctrine of God and to educate others to do the same. This is due to the fact that evil succeeds and individuals who know what is good choose to keep silent. Allow me to emphasize that evil succeeds when people who know what is good choose to keep silent. 
As the seductive spirits attack the church with devilish doctrines, we must raise the standard of God's true beliefs against them. There are far too many demon doctrines for us to cover all of them today, so we will concentrate on a handful. The first devilish doctrine that has crept into the church is, it doesn't matter how you live. Another deception of the seductive spirits that are out against the church, especially at this end time, is that the way you live does not matter. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. By this scripture, we understand that any doctrine or teaching that says that the way we live does not matter is nothing, but the doctrine of devils. We do not belong to ourselves, we belong to Christ since we were purchased at a price, Jesus' precious blood. As a result, we cannot live our life in any way other than in accordance with Christ's given standard. Get out of there if you go before a judge who endorses sin. If you attend a church that avoids discussing sin, get out of it. The Bible confronts sin head-on and tells us time and time that we must tackle the issue of sin in our lives. What you subject your eyes to see and what you give your ears to hear matter to your life. The fact that everyone is doing something does not mean it is the right thing to do. The Bible says we should not join multitudes to do evil. What you say matters, what you think matters, how you react to issues matters. You cannot say that you are a born-again child of God and live like hell itself. No, if you are a child of God, you have to live a life that reflects that you are a child of God. A life of obedience, a life of repentance, a life of humility. If you commit to that sin, it matters. If you don't commit that sin, it matters. If you pray, it matters. If you don't pray it, still matters. We must be mindful of ourselves. Otherwise, we fall short of God's expectations. We must not behave like the five foolish virgins described in Matthew chapter 25. They noticed the other five virgins carrying extra oil for their lamps, but they assumed it didn't matter. Their carelessness resulted in irreversible regret. May you not reach God's judgment throne before realizing the importance of holiness. May you not close your eyes in death before you realize that every sin for habit and act of unrighteousness matters to God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue holiness, chase after it. We must be cautious of demon doctrines since they are tempting to follow and lead to hell. The prosperity gospel is the second devilish doctrine we'll look at, but I don't like calling it that. I like to refer to it as commercial faith or the commercial gospel. Many churches nowadays do not remind their members of heaven, but rather teach them about riches and how to gain money. Instead of Christ, they are continually prophesying money and preaching prosperity. This is likewise a devilish doctrine. Satan is fully aware that no matter how wealthy someone becomes on earth, his or her money cannot provide as a gateway to eternity. In fact, the devil is ready to give people money in order to rob them from heaven. The devil can make you rich in case you didn't know, he can give you more money than you ever dreamed of, but it will come at a cost. The Bible says it profits nothing if a person gains the whole world and loses his soul. 
There is nothing anyone can give in exchange for his soul, it is not wrong or bad to be prosperous, but we must know that our prosperity is not a license into heaven. There are numerous teachers that inspire individuals to generate money regardless of where it comes from. They attempt to make you feel bad if you don't have a specific quantity of money in your bank account by a certain age. You are a filled person, or God does not love you, or you lack faith. Being wealthy is not a measure of your faith or the extent to which God loves you. The commercial gospel has replaced the gospel of the cross. Rather than preaching Christ to mankind, many now say, Come to our church and you will have more money and prosperity. God can make you wealthy, but it should not be the foundation of your relationship with Him. The gospel of Christ should not be replaced with the gospel of commercial faith. This doctrine of commercial faith has caused preachers to portray God as Santa Claus, although God is not a magician. He is not a money multiplier. In return for money, the devil takes God from mankind. They are ecstatic about it. Those who have become preachers of commercial religion rather than preachers of righteousness have been possessed by seductive spirits who seek to persuade others to adopt false doctrines. Unfortunately, the body of Christ is becoming more prosperous, losing sight of the fact that the highest level of blessing is to make heaven. <laughs>